and we participate in a revival or we are praying for revival, but we're going to live in revival. And uh, and so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Hallelujah. Well, this is an important message, I believe, and it, it caps off what we've been talking about. Revival, uh, we, we talked first and introduced uh, the concept of revival, and, and revival is really something that uh, comes from God himself, but we it happens when we hunger and thirst uh, for him, and then he he feels it. And mm -hmm. and reformation is really on our part. It starts with us. Uh, of course, it doesn't end with us, but it starts with us as a renewing of our mind on the individual basis. Uh, but in uh, <clears throat> in aggregate, though, it relates to a change in the culture. So it it starts with revival, and and we can't have reformation, a change in the culture, if we are not having revival first. Because in the revival, that's when we become sensitive to the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit and, and to the plans and will of God. And we need to start there. And so it all starts with revival. And that's a, an awakening within us uh, for the things of God. And so we're hungering and thirsting after those things. So we're going to just talk in, in general terms about uh, revival uh, to begin with and uh, give a couple of examples of revival, and uh, then uh, we will talk more generally about the concepts of, of revival, and uh, what, you, what I really want us to understand tonight is revival is not just a periodic uh, uh, meeting, uh, bringing an evangelist to stir people up. And uh, Sherry and I have been in a lot of congregations that periodically they had uh, what was called, uh, they had a revival. They had uh, those revivals periodically. And, and that was basically to promote their activities, uh, their own activities. And it wasn't aimed at uh, getting people awakened into the spirit of God and then changing their mindset and eventually changing culture because that's really what God wants to do. He has revival all the time in his heart. I mean, and revival I mean, is always going on in heaven, an awakening in the uh, life-giving spirit. It's always moving. Hmm, and we'll see what, that's what the kingdom is. The kingdom is the realm of the Holy Spirit. It's the realm where the spirit of God moves. And what we're gonna see is it comes in a lot of different forms. But wherever it shows up, there's going to be opposition to it. Mm. And it's, Amen. it's not Amen. going to look uh, just exactly like we want it to look. And sometimes it gets messy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so we're going to just look at this and, and begin to understand how uh, God works in revival. And he, he's working in the hearts of people first. And so as he draws us and we draw close to him, mm -hmm. and then he draw, draws closer to us. So as we take steps to him, he runs towards us. And that's, that's always uh, just uh, mind boggling to me to think that if we just take small steps toward him, we want more of him, more of his presence in our life, he is going to show up and uh, we, he will set us on fire. And Hallelujah. I, I want us to think about a, a revival, a, a movement of God that uh, began uh, in the New Testament with the coming of the Son of God to earth. Now that, that is a movement of God. And uh, when, when Jesus was born, uh, we're, we're going to find out it didn't look like everybody was expecting. You had all of these religious people expecting Jesus to come one way. Mm -hmm. And in reality, from uh, the book of Daniel, we see they were expecting him to come uh, on, as a general, as a conquering general mm -hmm. to uh, kick out the Romans and kick out all of the enemies of uh, Israel. And so he had all of these people with expectations of what a movement of God looks like. But let's read about what it actually looked like in Luke chapter two, Sherry. Luke 2, 6 and 7. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Oh, that wasn't like what people were thinking about. 
I mean, you had all of these religious scholars, uh, very, uh, very in uh, tune to the mm -hmm. uh, scriptures, they thought, but they missed the coming. And that is a great oh, movie oh, uh, of the oh. Holy Spirit. Uh, they were looking one way and he came a different way. The, the Lord came in a different form. But as and soon, we, we don't want to miss his visitation. That's right. That, that's what this is, message is about. We, we need to be open. We need to be open to what the way, whatever way the Lord comes, whatever way he shows up. And uh, immediately when the enemy found out that he was uh, there in, in the mm -hmm. movement of, the, of God on the earth, uh, they wanted to kill him. They wanted to cut off his head. Uh, so the uh, so the um, wise men came from the east and they were following his star and they were looking for the king. And so what would be more natural than going to the king of the land and Herod uh, and asking, well, where is he born of the king? And Herod wasn't born king. He, he was appointed king, but mm -hmm. he's, they're looking for the one born king. And and so he went, they went there and boy, really worried Herod and, and all of the people around him. And so they sent out an army and started cutting off heads of little boys. Mm -hmm. uh, where is he born king of the yeah. Jews? Well, he, he was born king, but king really is the kingdom personified. It, there it was, the kingdom was there wrapped up in Jesus. And we see his ministry on the earth. He was the kingdom personified. What is the kingdom? Well, we're going to see that the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So it's the realm of the Holy Spirit. It's a realm where the Spirit moves. That's the realm where miracles happen, mm -hmm. and where revival happens. It's yes, all hallelujah. In the kingdom, in the realm of the king. And so that's going on in in the supernatural realm and and what we're wanting to look at tonight is how do we bring that into the natural realm where we are how do how do we let that kingdom live on the inside of us mm -hmm. and manifest and live in revival yeah so that we can live in revival god wants us to do that all the time not just have uh, a week in the spring and a week of revival in the fall no he wants us to <laughs> live in revival now, the, the interesting thing about revival, and we see this from Matthew 13, we're not going to read uh, read the story, uh, but it's a parable that Jesus, uh, and I'm just going to summarize it, begins in uh, verse 24 of Matthew 13, and he said, the kingdom is like this, the kingdom, and so what is the kingdom? Well, it's the realm of the Holy Spirit, it's, it's where the Spirit is moving, uh, that's the kingdom, mm, and, and he, he said, uh, there was a, a land owner and he planted good seed because there's good seed in the kingdom. Now, it's seed form. Look at that. It's in a seed form and uh, it's a wheat. He's talking about wheat, but he said uh, there was an enemy and the enemy planted some uh, counterfeit. Uh, and it was weeds. Mm, it's mm, called mm, tear, mm, but it's mm. weeds. And a lot of people couldn't tell. Uh, couldn't tell mm -hmm. what was the real revival, the real kingdom, and oh, what was the false. Wow, wow, wow. And, and so Jesus gave us instructions here, and people don't follow these instructions. Uh, he said, uh, just let the wheat grow mm -hmm. and, and let the weeds grow or let the tares grow. And mm -hmm. don't try to pull them up. But don't say, oh, this is a weed when it's really a tear. I mean, really a wheat. Mm -hmm. he, he said, don't do that. He said, just let it all grow. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting, uh, I, I've watched some revivals uh, as mm -hmm. a, we've been studying about this. I, I watched uh, uh, the Toronto uh, Blessing. And, and you can't imagine how many people uh, criticized the, that, that revival in uh, Toronto. Uh, and and they, so they had scriptures and they'd say, oh, this was not of God. And I've got a scripture that says uh, that it's not of God. And I, so they're taking their uh, vain imaginations and, and coming up with scriptures and applying them and doing exactly what Jesus said, don't do. You don't 
know yet what is the wheat and what is the tare when it's growing. You, you'll only know that later. But when, when you actually know it, then we'll pull up the weeds, we'll bundle them all together, and they'll be burned mm -hmm. in the fire. But, but a lot of people criticize that uh, Toronto uh, blessing because, and you know why? Because people were laughing. <laughs> well, you know, that's not of the world. The world's not, they're not, they're not laughing in church. Uh, worldly people are not. I, I mean, this is of God because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. So there was a lot of criticism, just like there was a criticism of Jesus being born in a major. Mm -hmm. uh, he came a different way than people were looking at, and they were critical of it, and they wanted to kill him. And, and so when these revivals uh, spring up around the world, and they have over the centuries, uh, revival spring up and uh, another good example is the Welch revival it was just young people hungering and mm -hmm, thirsting mm -hmm. after a move of God and God began to move in such a an awesome way and then you had all of these uh, theologians come in from England and said well we need to put our stamp on things and when they got mm -hmm. in there they saw this is so pure and so holy we're not going to bring our experience and our expertise into it. We're just going to have to step back because God is doing something Hallelujah. Uh, that Hallelujah. is incredible. There's another thing about the kingdom. You know, 1 Corinthians 4.20 says the kingdom is not in word, but it's in power. Hallelujah. So you're going to see a Hallelujah. of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see mm -hmm. the power mm -hmm. of, of God. And uh, we're going to look at a video, just a short, uh, just a few seconds of a video. And it's a video from the 1980s. And this is probably not going to look like a video, uh, a revival that you're thinking it's going to look mm -hmm. like. So I want to explain it beforehand. Uh, this man, the revivalist uh, that started the big revival, and there were thousands and thousands of people that came to the Lord in the 1980s. And his name was Carlos uh, Anaconda. Anacondia. Anacondia. Mm -hmm. Carlos Anacondia. And uh, we're going to just see him, and he's just praying. He's up on the platform, and there may be hundreds and hundreds of people uh, out in the open uh, for this revival, and he's just praying. Now, what happened in his revival? People, uh, and he started with this prayer uh, that uh, he was he was binding up the works of the enemy in that group of people, and, and he was freeing them from addictions and, and all kinds of uh, uh, oppression from the devil, uh, and he's just binding up the hand of the enemy. And so you've got mm -hmm. hundreds of people, and what happened uh, in that revival? The people that were oppressed of the devil and possessed of the devil, they began falling out and they they began acting like snakes and doing all kinds of things. So he had a, a company of uh, what he called stretcher bears. So they would just go out. You, you'll see them in a moment. They had on orange. Uh, a lot of them had on orange vests. Mm -hmm. and, and they would go out and find these people that were being delivered from addictions, from uh, the oppression of the devil. And so they were being, just as he was praying, this is a revival, but it doesn't look like the kind of revival that I was raised up in, uh, in my local congregations. <laughs> uh, this is different. <laughs> and, and it's probably different than what you might have expected Amen. what Amen. a revival is. And that's the reason I want to talk about this tonight. I want us to realize the revival's not going to look exactly like you might think it looks like. And most of the people missed Jesus coming the first time. Uh, they didn't know how he was going to come. Well, they're not, they're going to miss him the next time too. Yeah, we that's right. Be, that's right. We need to have our hearts open. Mm, our, mm, uh, mm. Pull off the limits and say, oh, Hallelujah. the revival doesn't have to happen just exactly like this. But you'll see, and this is just an example of a revival that is on a video that we can watch uh, for about a minute and a half or so. But just watch the stretcher bearers. And remember that all he's doing is praying and just liberating people who are oppressed of the devil. Up, he's just up there. He hasn't even begun his message yet. He's just praying. This is just a prayer. Okay, let's have it, Jerry. Okay. 
share screen, share sound. And it is it up there? Okay, okay. And here it comes. Open it up. La maldición de la droga en esta ciudad. Juzga aquellos que trafican con el dolor de la gente. En el nombre de Jesús, rompe las cadenas. Conoceréis la verdad, varón, mujer. Y esa verdad te va a ser libre, no te preocupes. Satanás resiste la autoridad. Pero el diablo está vencido. El diablo está vencido en el nombre de Jesucristo. Demonio inmundo de sal la muerte. Suelta la mente y las vidas que has tomado, diablo. En el nombre de Jesús. Close it off here. Okay. Okay. Now we're back. <laughs> now, I don't know if, if that well, got your attention or not. Sherry, you have something? What, what he was speaking, uh, of course, he was, he's Hispanic. And so he was speaking Spanish. But in, in, in his prayer, he was speaking uh, liberty. He was speaking freedom uh, to these, uh, the people that were there. And so what he was doing, he was binding the strong man before he could, uh, before people could uh, be, be saved and healed and delivered and, 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 and receive what the Holy Spirit wanted to do. Uh, there was a binding of the enemy there. And, and so he was speaking freedom or liberty uh, to those people. And they were, they were carrying them out and they had another place that they took them uh, to minister uh, to those, those individuals. And so we just wanted you to, um, I don't know about you, but just watching that stirs, stirs me up, stirs my heart up uh, to see uh, just uh, the movement of the Holy Spirit. And we want you to have an expectation uh, that, that the Holy Spirit wants to move uh, in your life, in your family, in, in wherever you are. And that's part of living in revival, is expecting God to move uh, in, in your life. Amen, amen. Okay, so let's look at another uh, movement of God uh, in Acts. Uh, and we'll look in the book of Acts, and of course, this is Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, and I just want to share you to read a, a very few things, but I want you to know that this is about a movement of the Holy Spirit, and uh, what we see is that it gets all kinds of a response from the people, because they weren't expecting the kind of movement mm -hmm. that happened mm -hmm. on the day of Pentecost, and, and first, as an overview to, to these few verses I wanted to read, is that there was a mighty rushing wind. And, and it, it was like a tornado. It wasn't just the breeze mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like that we might have outside of our house. It was like a tornado. And, and it caused the people in the city to get stirred up and want to know what, what was this going through our, our city. It wasn't just the people them praying in tongues that that wouldn't have gone all over the city this went all over the city and, and multitudes of people then came to where that wind was and and, and to see what was going on and, and what i want you to see here is there were lots of adjectives uh, talking about <laughs> that movement and and, and first mm -hmm. of all it, they were confused see that they, they went there but they were confused and that's negative. These these are the people that went to where well, Pentecost was. Okay. And, and the, then they also said they were amazed. Well, that's positive. And they marveled. No, that's positive. And then they were perplexed. Well, that's kind of negative. Then. <laughs> and then they mocked. They mocked the disciples. 
I, I mean, all kinds of these emotions. So that they were expecting revival and the movement of God to be one way, and it came a different way, and they had all of these emotions, and some of them missed the, the visitation of God and, and said, well, we ought to just stop it. Well, but remember, Jesus said, don't tear, don't pull up the tares with mm -hmm. the wheat, because when you do that, you might pull up the wheat. It might be a real move of God, and and, and it's not yet in the formal stage, in the final stage, and we don't yet see the the wheat, the head of wheat on it, the grains of wheat. Yet we don't mm -hmm. may not see that yet, but but it's the it's the beginning of a real move of God, and, and so don't don't stop it and don't say oh you can't have it you know there's a lot of pastors that do that that they, they say no I, I don't want any wildfire so i'm going mm -hmm, i'm going to mm -hmm. stomp out anything uh, that might look like wildfire but jesus said don't do it yeah. because you might be pulling up the real thing you might be stopping the real thing uh because just let the wheat grow and let the weeds grow beside it and, and at the end we'll know and we'll burn up the the weeds. Weeds. Woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's look at what happened on the day of Pentecost. A few when, verses, which you're all familiar with, of course. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. You know, those of you from Oklahoma, you do know what, what tornadoes are. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled. Are they confused, amazed, <laughs> and marveled. Saying one to another, look, are not these, these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in their own language in which we were born? So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying one to another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, oh, they're drunk. They're just full of new wine. Hallelujah. They didn't even know what that meant. So. <laughs> See, they're pull, trying to pull up the wheat. The wheat. The, uh, the, the tears with the no, wheat. No, they're trying to pull up the, uh, the wheat. wheat. Yeah, they're, no, they're trying, trying to, to pull yeah, up the wheat it. when it's uh, in an early stage. Now, what we see here was a mighty move of the wind and sound, and they heard the sound from heaven, and the uh, multitude went there. And and uh, what was it that caused all that? There were some people hungry for the move of God. They were 120 in the upper room, and they got it. They they had fire on their heads, and they were speaking in tongues and speaking in languages that they didn't know. So they're doing it was an amazing uh, move of God. And you might say, well. I just wished I had been there on the in the upper room, I, or I, even if I had been in the city and gone there, I would have known this was a real move of God. But a lot of people didn't. They were perplexed, they were confused, and they were mocking. But let me tell you, you can participate in this Amen. same Amen. in this same kind Amen. of Amen. movement of God, same kind of revival, and we see it in John in Acts chapter 3. Now what happened in Acts chapter 3 is that two of those 120, the two were Peter and John, and they went up to pray. Oh, I, I bet they they had a habit of praying, of praying. Yeah, they went up yeah, to they pray. They went up at the hour of prayer, they went up to pray, and on the way they passed a man that was uh, lame, and you know the story, and of course uh, uh, Peter gave him what he had, which uh, Peter and John gave him what what they had, which was the name of Jesus. They said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Okay, so he did. And so I want to get down to uh, 3, uh, 19. Acts 3, 19. Therefore, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of of the Lord. Okay, we're going to read this in two different translations. But what I what I want you to see here, there's this time of refreshing. Now, the word refreshing literally means the wind. Uh, it, it's just like the wind that happened over there with 120 
It was an intense wind that, and sound that mm, happened over mm, there mm. in Acts chapter 2. And now we're seeing the same thing Hallelujah. that Peter and John were carrying revival. And when they saw that uh, uh, lame man, uh, they prayed. And then in the name of Jesus, he got up and he went with them. He, he wanted to stay with them Ooh, because hallelujah. they were carrying revival in their heart mm, now. Mm, and mm, uh, mm. so revival was going on. And, and Peter turns to the... Uh, to the people and explains how you can be in the revival yourself. You can live in revival mm -hmm. because what we have to do is repent. Now I want to talk about yeah. this word repent for a minute and then, and then we'll go into the refreshing and the times of refreshing. See the times of refreshing and that refreshing literally means that wind. It's the wind of God. It's the breath of God breathing upon us and it's bringing, bringing us this refreshing. Now, uh, when you first look at this, you might just say rest. And it's, rest is stopping doing anything. But this is times of refreshing. So this is not just a one time. This is seasons of refreshing. These are things that go on and on and on. Uh, Jesus, uh, God wants us to walk and live in revival all the time. Seasons of refreshing. Oh, hallelujah. And, I want Sherry to read it out of another translation, the Passion Translation. This is the Amplified. Oh, I'm sorry, the Amplified. So repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret your past sins and return to God. Seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away or blotted out, completely erased so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind. Ooh, there's the wind. There's the breath of God. On a hot day. Oh, oh, oh hallelujah. There's the same thing that happened on in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost is happening because Peter and John are just carrying revival wherever they go and, and bringing that same wind and breath of God. And there's no limit on that. Mm -hmm. and, and the same breath of God. And, and it, it's happening. And and they do that when they find God's purpose and, and, and walk in that way. Now, I want to talk about repentance for, for a moment because there a, a lot of people are trained uh, after they hear a message to go down and let's say in a, a local congregation, they go down uh, to the altar and they weep and they cry. And then they get up and they're not changed. That, that's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not true repentance. Uh, repentance uh, is really changing the way we're going and engaging with God's thoughts mm -hmm. and God's mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. You know, God's, and we see this in Isaiah 55. God said, my thoughts and my ways, they're mm -hmm. higher than yours, as high as the heavens are higher than the earth. And, and we've got to engage with his ways and his thoughts. And so that's what re, what repentance is. So it is not godly, re, godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. But mm -hmm. see, there's a lot of pastors that train their people, uh, the people in their congregation, when they give a, a good message to that the people run down to the altar and they cry and, and they weep. And then they get up, but they're not changed. And that's not mm -hmm, repentance mm -hmm. because, see, we see here in 2 Corinthians, uh, read this verse here, please. 2 Corinthians 7.10, for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Okay, so godly sorrow produces repentance. Mm -hmm. Godly sorrow is not equal to repentance. It just brings us to that point. And, and so what repentance is, is then is turning uh, and engaging with God's thoughts and with God's ways. No longer are we just going to keep doing our own thing and having our own agenda and our own schedule, but we're going to engage with his thoughts and his ways. Now, What's going to cause us to do that? Well, it's the goodness of God. And I'll ask you to read this from Romans 2, 4. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God 
leads you to repentance. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Okay, so what I want to talk about now is just uh, exactly how do we live in revival. And, and I want to give you uh, just some uh, updates on what uh, Sherry and I have been doing, and then we'll also hear an update from uh, North Carolina uh, because I had sent you out a, a memo a few days ago about prayer for a revival in North Carolina at the University of North Carolina. So we'll give you an update on that in a moment. But one of the things I want you to know is Sarah's that Sarah's with us. Yeah, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll let her talk. Uh, one of the things I want you to know is that there are some things we need to do in order to live in it. And the, the Holy Spirit has said to Sherry and I uh, that we carry revival. And, and mm -hmm. so wherever we go, and we've said this for years, we carry revival. And we were recently in Spain, uh, and the update on that particular meeting uh, was that we went there, uh, and the idea of the meeting was to bring some people together to plan uh, an infiltration into uh, Europe. into Europe. And so we went there with apostles and prophets and we prayed and we prophesied and and uh, just hearing the Lord and, and developing strategy on how to do that. And it was a meeting unlike other meetings that we've gone to because uh, the, and although we've other had other meetings in Spain, um, and and we've been active in in that arena before, but this is a new initiative uh, to begin. And, and actually, there are going to be some people associated with us that are going to be relocating to uh, Spain initially, but into other areas as well, in, in order to bring revival and to begin to uh, discipling people and bring movement of God into Europe and all across Europe. And uh, we're going to have an initiative in uh, uh, both in Spain and in Poland. And uh, there's other people associated with us that are operating in Germany and uh, Italy. And so that it's just an exciting time and God wants a revival. But we're not looking for something external. We're looking for people with revival, carrying revival in their hearts. And that's what God said about the meeting, that it's really bringing a revival uh, to those people. But it's because we are carrying revival in our hearts and we're carrying the kingdom. See, the kingdom uh, is, within. is within us. And, and that is the realm where the movement of God occurs. And so we have to have that movement of God. So to begin giving people a hunger and a thirst for God and the things of God and the thoughts of God, and then they can renew their minds. And then there can be a reformation and a reformation in culture, change in culture. All of that's going to lead to a change in culture, but it doesn't start anywhere except with the movement of God and with revival in our hearts and an awakening. That's the process. And then because we're hungry for God, we seek God and we want to change the way we've been going, repent and begin to engage in his thoughts and his ways. And uh, so it was really exciting. Uh, for us to, to be there and be planning. And, and this is not just a, a short-term plan, but this is a long-term yeah. plan. One of the apostles said uh, that in 20 years, we will have seen multitudes of people uh, being affected and changed um, by the, their encounters with God as a result of what we initiated uh, the last few days in Europe. And just to give you an example uh, the fact that we uh, carry revival in our heart. Um, there were some uh, pastors from uh, Mexico where Sherry and I have ministered in mm -hmm. recent days. And they said that when we were there, we revolutionized their churches. Revolutionized. Mm -hmm. Now that means, uh, that was a pretty big word. Yeah. And it, Their congregation. Their, yeah. their congregation. It revolutionized what they were doing. Revolutionized that. That sounds like revival, that we carry revival. And God sent us uh, to Spain with revival fires in our heart. 
and, and not just us, mm -hmm. but other people. And all of you can carry revival fires in your heart. And that's what this uh, series has been about, to make sure that you're aware that you can do that. And that revival doesn't just look like a spring revival in your local congregation or a fall revival in your, but it's something that God wants to uh, fan the flame. Yeah, continually. <clears throat> have a burning in your heart for the, for the things of God. And uh, we're going to see great and mighty things. And like I said, there are people relocating that have uh, had large congregations uh, in Latin America, and they're moving uh, to uh, Europe and, and beginning to disciple people there and develop uh, congregations and plants, churches, and, and do lots of things. And mm -hmm. in 20 years from now, we're going to see multitudes of people affected by that. Now, here are just uh, three scriptures, I, I think, uh, help us to understand what it means to uh, live uh, in in revival. What what does it mean uh, to live in revival? And one of the things that uh, we have to uh, be crucified, we have to be conformed to Jesus and mm. uh, to what he's saying. Uh, it, it's not just doing our will and our schedule and our purpose. It, it's finding out laying down our life and taking up the cross uh, to follow him. Read this, Jerry, from Matthew 16. Okay. Because revival will cost us. Matthew 16, 24 through 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Okay. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it okay you have to take Hallelujah. take up your cross lay down your life take up your cross and that's the only way you can be one of his disciples that's what revival is you won't carry revival in your in your heart you have to take up your cross he carried revival he he was the movement of god yes, on amen. the earth the personified and then we see that our identity is in him. Uh, we see this in Acts 17, Jerry, please. Acts 17, 28. In him we live and move and have our being, for we are also his offspring. Hallelujah. We and then in the Passion born. Translation. Okay, I want you to read this out of the other translation because this is where it says, uh -huh. where it says, we live and move and have our being. Passion Translation says, that's our, where our identity well, yeah. is. All of our identity is. It that. is through Him that we live and function, and have our identity. Just as your own poets have said, our lineage comes from Him. Oh, hallelujah! hallelujah. So th this is not about your education, about your parents. It's not about uh, all your work experience. Your identity is in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now Hallelujah. I want to, this is the last scripture I have, and this is from Galatians. We have to live by the faith, faith. Of, of the Son of God. I like the translation here, the Passion Translation. My old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives in he lives his life through me we live in union as one this this is a very powerful scripture please hear what the spirit is saying my new life is empowered by the faith of the son of god who loves me so much that he gave himself for me dispensing his life into mine. Not for mine, but into mine. So he has put himself in you. Amen. In Donna, in Eddie, in in Deb, in Judy, in Cindy, he in David, in Julaine. He has put his life, who he is, in you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And I want you to think about that, that 
Uh, a lot of us just think, well, we've been given a measure of faith, so I have a little bit of faith. But you know that verse said uh, we live by the faith of the Son of God. We have been crucified. So the faith of the Son of God is unlimited. Oh, it is. Hallelujah. It is powerful. Hallelujah. And, and that's, that's the faith we need to recognize. If we're going to live in revival, we've got to realize that we are crucified. We are in Christ and he's in us and we, we abide in him and he abides in us and we live by the faith of the son of god hallelujah now we have a question wait just a second here we have a we have a question and and that is how do we draw from that life into our current situation or our current circumstances how do we draw from that life okay well so we have to be around some people uh who are going to help us go forward because we can't do it on our own we have to be uh in fire we have to be on fire we have mm -hmm. to be uh surrounded by people of fire who are on fire and then that's going to cause us to our hearts to burn you know those uh, men on the road to emmaus uh, said did not our hearts burn within us as he opened the scriptures uh, to us and that, that they were walking with jesus but uh, as we're walking with uh, people who are on fire for God, then that's going to help us to burn. And, and so we, then we don't just rest. See, the refreshing is not just a rest. It is a restoration. It's the very breath mm -hmm. of God blowing on us. Yeah, bringing energy back to us. And giving us an expectation. And so we need to have mm -hmm. higher expectations. We need to see, I, I put it in these three things that we have to recognize th that uh, it, it, it's not by our faith, it's by the faith of the Son of God. We have to pick up our, lay down our life, pick up the cross, pick up the cross that God has and, and walk as a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ and to see our identity in Christ. So all of these things. And this this really, these meetings that we're having are not just natural things providing uh, natural knowledge. These, see, this is about kingdom ministry. And, and uh, this session, uh, in this series, uh, all the of these uh, Zoom meetings are about kingdom leadership. And so it's important for us to recognize what kingdom leadership looks like, kingdom ministry. And kingdom ministry, as I said earlier, that kingdom ministry doesn't just give concepts, it opens up the supernatural realm. Amen. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're opening up the supernatural realm so that you can walk in the kingdom um, in the movement of God and carry the fires of revival uh within you now i want to give a quick update well, i just have a uh, more <clears> comment <throat> okay. okay the supernatural overcomes the natural every time mm -hmm. and so if there is a situation in the natural realm then what you need to do what i need to do to overcome is to go and spend time in the supernatural realm with the lord and that's through prayer, that's through speaking in tongues, that's through praise and worship. And, and that's where we receive empowerment. That's where we receive the answer to what, what situation we're going through. That's where we find strength and to, to go another day, uh, to get on a plane and travel for nine hours and be in, in, in meetings that are so powerful that your natural body is is weak after you get finished with one of those meetings your body your physical body is weak but your spirit is leaping and rejoicing 